want people to know that this is not a picnic in the park at all. You know, and if you have mild symptoms, thank God, thank God. UCLA ER nurse Marcia Santini spoke to us from her bed and today. She couldn't sit up because she says she gets too dizzy. To it's just one of the many COVID-19 symptoms she's experiencing. Weird sensations in my head. I get severe pain in different parts of my body. Um, I've now lost my taste and smell. I have a lot of GI type symptoms. Santini tested positive after her husband came down with symptoms. Her biggest fear as an ER nurse was bringing the virus home to her family. And now she, her husband, and her 21-year-old son all have it. This was like someone punched me in the gut and ripped my heart out. And I'm thinking, how could this have happened? We were so careful. Careful indeed. All praises to the Most High, Yahweh, the Heavenly Father. In the name of the Holy Spirit, the Earthly Mother, sanctifying Yahweh Shai, the Holy Son. Brothers and sisters, Jews and Gentiles alike, welcome. This is your humble servant, Big Levi, and today is Wednesday, December 16th, 2020, and it's currently 10 o'clock, 10 a.m. So tomorrow we're going to do the fast. I'm going to do uh, a three days dry fast, and uh, other people will join us. We will fast for the Great Conjunction. We will fast for the beloved Heavenly Father, the horrible and terrible God, to give us our power back. Uh, brothers and sisters, what you're looking at here, it's a beautiful family uh, that is so happy, you know, together, you know, like we used to be happy with our own family. So, um, what happened to these women, and she's a nurse, and she, she's, she was being careful, and she asked herself, how did this happen? We were, we were masked. And okay, first of all, you're working in a hospital treating people with COVID-19. You think wearing a mask will save you? This thing is divine. This is not like a regular disease. They call it COVID-19. That's not what it is. Look, they knew this thing was going to come because they have our books. It's not, they didn't plan this. The elite did not plan this. Or oh, this is a scam. They didn't plan none of that. They have books just like we knew this was going to come. The people that have been uh, reading uh, more than 66 books, we knew for a fact this is what was going to come because the Mosai did the same thing to us. He made our people weak. He sent a plague uh, 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 before us. Okay, the beloved big uh, uh, brother, Big Judah, but the book about, uh, the, I believe, the uh, something codex... Uh, for, I forgot the name. Uh, the quarantine. I, I want to say quarantine co codex, but it's something like that. Uh, something teen codex. And this book, it costs like over three, four, five, six thousand dollars. You can't even find it on uh, on Amazon. You can't even find, even find this book nowhere. They show you this happened when the when the Spaniards come to our shore because it was divine. If this thing is ordained for you to get it, you will get it. If it ordained for it for for it to kill you, it will kill you. Loss of taste of smell is nothing. It's just it could be it could it could be anything. Two years ago, I had a flu. First time in my life I ever get a flu. I lost my taste of smell. Uh, <laughs> I lost my sense of smell and taste. It, it was hell for me, man. I was like, man, you know that the big guy like to eat, and I like to smell my food. I could not smell the food. I could not taste it. And it, it, it was it was antagonizing me. That thing was like agonized. I was like so angry. But this is divine. Before I got my people jumping in on conspiracy theories and say they're trying to bring Agenda 21, they're trying to bring the whole population. Oh no, fathers bringing the whole population down, not they. Fathers doing this. Over here, we give full credit to the father. He is doing this. He's controlling both sides. Those aliens don't know what the hell they are doing. They are running. Now, they told people it's called COVID-19 and then wear a mask and all that because they knew for a fact this was going to come. Again, just like many of us that study, we knew for a fact the father was going to bring a plague and this is it. This is, it. No, this is no joke here. Okay? So now what you're seeing watch those people if you finish watching this you'll know okay this is why this woman get it 
you, you, you'll understand, okay, well, this is those people. Okay? All right, so let's get these other women and, again, listen to what they are saying. Now, the television anchor using her platform to inform people about what it is like to battle COVID-19. But the one thing she's baffled by is exactly how she got it, since she thought she'd been following all COVID guidelines. That's the thing. Okay, I've been, I, I wear a mask. I keep my distances. I wash my hand. How did I get this? Some people, oh, because it's 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 fake. Like, no, that has nothing to do with fake, man. This thing is very real, and they are taking this very serious, man. Okay? This is not fake. I, I, I don't want my people to go out there and take credit from the most high. You may think it is, but it isn't. She spoke with Stephen Fabian. When Houston television anchor Melanie Lawson started feeling ill a few weeks ago, she figured the nagging cough was no big deal. COVID-19 didn't even cross her mind. I'm wearing my mask, washing my hands. Uh, I'm not around anybody who's been sick. So the KTRK TV newswoman was completely floored when her doctor told her she had tested positive for the virus. Do you have this feeling like, man, I did everything right. How did this happen? I was blown away because I have to tell you, uh, I haven't been to a restaurant probably since March except to pick up food. I haven't been in a store. Uh, we Our church services are now, now online. Our church services, services are now online. Okay, you already know who you're dealing with here. I'm a good Christian woman. I serve the Lord. I have a good job. I, I stay away from scumbags. And how the hell did I get this? I want my mask. I shouldn't. Yet she had it. That is because it's ordained by the Father. That is because at one point, I'm thinking like we all have this thing at some some point like during the year, is we just didn't know it. And we we fine. Like like when July when I lost my taste of uh, smell and uh, uh, um and uh, and uh, my sense of smell and taste I was eating a, a burger I was eating a, a, a Jamaican patty and then it tastes stale I'm like what the hell's going on so I'm like I taste the juice I couldn't taste anything I'm like what's going on here man and then uh, I tried to I, go, I went home and uh i taste the food i'm like damn it i can't taste the food i can smell anything i told the wife and she's like oh they say that was early on they say oh that's one of the uh the covid 19 symptoms and then like on the next day uh, i was eating some food and then it tastes great i never experienced anything any symptoms anything like that like i said i had a cold though i had a cold uh, um before that Two years ago, it happened when I had that flu. I was horrible. All my body was crushing. I was in 2018 or 20, 2017. So, those people, look, if you lost your taste of smell, and, and, and uh, um, it could mean anything. It doesn't necessarily mean COVID-19. COVID-19 are all, all sort of things in it because they don't know what it is. That's why they are coming with vaccine. Brothers, look, you're going to find how silly the Gentiles are getting, how silly the two-thirds are getting, like how they are dealing with this. And be, even because of, the, even be, even that is happening, those people are still running around telling people this thing is not real. And they are not taking this seriously. Okay? All right, let's move on to the next one. Well, tonight, hospitals across Southern California are overwhelmed with record numbers of very sick people. And a sign the worst is yet to come. The state is shipping thousands of body bags <laughs> to our area. All right, so they are shipping thousands of body bags. For what? For what? For what purpose? To just, having, to just have them there for conspiracy theories? That's why Trump lose that election. He was all embedding himself in, in, in conspiracy theorists and all that. Oh, yeah, there's a terrorist. Uh, uh, this, like, the, this disease is the demo. You know, it's, it's, it's a hoax. It's a hoax. It's a Democrat. He could have taken this disease and say, look what the Democrat did. They will unleash this disease. I'll save you from it. 
It's very, very serious. If you guys hollering up and come up unto me, I will come up with the vaccine and save you for it. The Democrat tried to kill the, the population, the entire world. I'll save all of you. Don't worry. He could have done that. He dismissed it. He'll go away. He'll go away. He'll go away. Just like everything else, he will go away. He'll go away. That is because those people are used to that. They used to the problem going away by us making making them going away. That's why they got that uh, uh, quote unquote that two third women uh, taking the vaccine. Oh, it's all you have to save the world and all that garbage and stuff. We used to do that for them, but this time it's not working. They got a thousand or more than that body bag and trucks. Let's watch. Kick it on, Chris Holmstrom begins our in depth coverage tonight. Across Southern California tonight, full-on crisis mode at our hospitals. Only 1.7% of ICU beds are available. Tonight in L.A. County, less than 100 beds remain. <clears throat> Chief Medical Officer of Harbor UCLA Medical Center, Dr. Anish Mahajan. We have broken our record, our previous record from the summertime, of number of hospitalized COVID patients. The biggest concerns, very few beds and staff stretched thin. And for the second day in a row, the L.A. County USC Medical Center has no more ICU beds available. Just too many patients needing critical care services for COVID. And so there is really no help to be had uh, from our neighboring hospital because we're all suffering the same problem. You hear what I say? They suffer from the same problem. Now, this thing was, last time I checked, it was 6.7. Now it's like 1.7. They got less than 100 beds available. This is serious, man. In Ventura County, only 1% of ICU beds are available. The county's public health officer spoke out, frustrated so many are being so careless. If a hospital were a car, it would be rattling right now. The numbers are getting to be astronomical. People are going to die that don't need to die. In Riverside County, no ICU beds are currently available. In San Bernardino County, Loma Linda University Health says all of their ICU beds are full tonight. This video from inside their intensive care floor. And in Orange County, another record number of people in hospitals tonight. And in a sign that it'll get much worse before it gets better, the governor has ordered temporary morgue trucks and more body bags for all of Southern California. Okay, temporary morgue trucks. You know what that means? Those are um, mobile morgue. Remember when the opioid crisis was killing them? Well, still killing them. And they didn't say anything about it. So the beloved sister Lisa Cabrera brought it out. And next thing you know, everybody was talking about this thing. Remember those trucks? That means too many of them died. That that means like the 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 local morgue do not have enough space, just like the hospital. They do not have enough space to put in there. And those people want to make you believe that it, this thing is affecting our oh, minority more than anybody. Because, oh, oh, you you so care about minority, you're going to lock up your whole country. The, the whole damn world, because you so care about us. You don't want us to die. Okay? That's why this, this is going on. You got refrigerated trucks out there filling with body. 60, 53-foot refrigerated storage units are currently standing by now in counties and at hospitals. We just had to order 5,000 additional body bags they just purchased for the state. This guy is dead serious. He's dead serious. This is not a guy, okay, we're trying to bring a new world order because, no, no, man. They got 5,000 additional body bags purchased for state inventory. This is she's real. And they don't know how to deal with this, man. Okay? Still now you got people thinking this thing is a joke. As the first COVID-19 vaccines arrive at hospitals across the country, a Charlotte man is pleading with everyone to take the virus seriously after losing his eighth friend to COVID this month. William Wilson says he hopes his story will help save others. WCNC Charlotte's Michelle Bowden has this exclusive interview. Wilson says for months he argued with one of his closest friends trying to convince him to wear a mask, but the last time he talked to him, that friend was calling from his hospital bed. Many of William Wilson's Facebook posts this year have been about the virus. Well, people are dying out here. You know, forget the politics, forget the all the other stuff. It's 
people's lives. His big frustration, people in his social circle who refuse to wear masks despite the fact that experts say they help protect us and each other. Okay, again, this thing doesn't help at all. It's just, uh, you know, they just told you to wear this thing to make you feel a little bit safe. If the Mosai ordained you to get this, you cannot hide from the Mosai. A, a mask cannot save you from this heavenly plague. And then again, and they will take a Negro, first Negro, to tell you about it. And then another Negro to tell you, hey man, we lost people. And stuff like that, okay? So you guys can rush up and go ahead and take that vaccine. But, you know, it, it, whether this it, um this, this is a made or fake or whatever, you, you lost eight people, man, in one month. I don't want to lose eight people in one month, man. Even though most, I don't have any friend. I only got one person I consider my friend. But I don't want to see anybody die in eight months that I knew. That I have some type of connection with. I don't want to see this. Yet, he has to keep telling his people, okay, don't do this and stuff. And then again, like I said, right now, this disease, let me see. Yeah, this disease is taking a lot of people out, especially the priesthood of Mahan. I made a video about this, and it's called the priesthood. Let me see if I can get this. I made a well. I, I don't. I, you can go just check it in my my, my in my um channel. It's called the demise, the demise of the priesthood of Mahan. Okay, and those people don't know how to deal with this, man. They don't. Catholic priest Michel Mukad. 38 diagnosed with COVID-19 take his own life next day funny thing is that guy look exactly like that uh, Levite brother that is a pastor that stay in my in, in, in my apartment they there is no they, it's just as they are twins Georgetown Father Michel Binan Mukad administer of St. Mary Our Lady of Ransom Catholic Church in Georgetown died Tuesday, December 8th, 2020. He was 38. He self-inflicted death come a day after a diagnosis of COVID-19. The priest known the parishioners as Father Michel sent out an email to members of the parish Monday night stating he had tested body for COVID-19. This guy killed himself. That means one, they don't believe in their God. That means two, they don't know how to deal with that with this stuff. And then the two third, the priesthood of Maham, and they, they well, this guy, Michel Mukha, George Georgetown, is that is that South Africa? Is that South Africa? Okay. Uh Georgetown. Could be Jamaica. Georgetown. Okay, Washington DC, is it? Hmm. Georgetown, South Africa. Hmm. Okay, I, I believe it's in Washington DC. Georgetown, Guyana? Mm -mm. Well, somewhere. I, I don't really care about this. So, Next, Shiver Shreveport pastor dies after battling with COVID-19. So, again, the priesthood of Mahan, they've been taking left and right. Well, they're not bringing this. I made a whole series of how those guys are dying in the church, like dive on live TV. They just fell and then die. Okay? Your Jesus could not get you out of this. This guy, he died after battling COVID-19. This thing is serious. And they don't know how to deal with it. They are doing silly stuff. Look, if you go around, you see the Gentiles are acting silly. Like the, 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 the most silliest thing they are doing. Okay? Alright, those guys, they, they are angry at each other. They are fighting each other because of that COVID-19 thing. Well. I follow the rules. I continue to follow the rules. And you guys still, time after time, are giving me citations. Yes. Yes, they have to give you citation even though you follow the rules time after time. We follow the rules. The so-called black man is the most behaved man in this universe. He never did anything wrong. He always followed the rules. He wears seatbelt while, while he's driving. 
our people, uh, the true, the true people of the Lord, the true Hebrew Israelites, they are very polite people. The one third is a very polite people. Even the two third, the church going people, they, you know, they even they will worship other God, but they are very polite. They won't get into. They always follow the rules. They always like um, know what not to do. Okay, our people are the most polite, and the, the, we follow all the rules. Yet you stop us. You you pull us over, searching our car for no reason, or the most minute, the, the most minimum or micro reason. Your tag light is not working. Your 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 tag got some mud in it, and you shoot the brother for that. And then now you you people are, are coming under the curse. Now you, you you get angry. This guy keep getting fined. <laughs> Oh my God! Keep getting fine, and uh, I think that's Nick the Greek or whatever, man. You can go ahead and watch it, but uh, those those people are, they are silly now. Look at this. Look at this women now. What you are seeing here. Y pues primero le hace los test normales de temperatura. Okay, this woman he made uh, she made uh, a little doll that can um, test the coronavirus. So you're going to have your kids playing with the doll that can test coronavirus all day. You put something on her, in her butt and then you plug it in there. And then if it turned green, let me see. Uh, there's a color that he said something. She said something. Okay, that means you don't have it. Negative. And then that means you don't have coronavirus. If it turned green, that means you have it. Is this the toy you want your daughter, your son? Well, this is most likely a daughter. You want your daughter to have? And then you're gonna put her in a, 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 a hospital. I don't even know if that thing is real. Doll that can be tested for virus hits the market before Christmas. And going to take temperature. And those people are laughing. This is a joke to them. Okay, this is uh, Spanish Spain. This is a joke to them. Something serious like that, you wanna make toys and give it to kids. You know how impressionable kids are? They're going to try to look. If they keep testing that thing, it keeps saying negative, And then they, they go to a, 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 another kid's parent. They know that parents has it or somewhere that they will play to, to, with this kid and try to test them. This is how backward and silly the Gentiles are, man. They are doing silly stuff. And this is no news at all for, the, for all of you. You know, this is no news at all. A former Milton pastor in jail tonight facing a bunch of child pornography charges. 62-year-old William Dalton Milam charged with promoting sexual performance of a child and 25 counts of possession of child pornography. Law enforcement agents say they found a number of devices containing child pornography when they raided his home this morning, including images depicting children as young as three engaged in sex acts. Yeah, we, we know this. This is not this is not like news. This happened all the time. And now it's more rampant. It's more rampant. That's why a guy like this, I have no respect for him. Okay, a guy like this, I, I met him in the dark holly. I will shake his hand. I will give him a good hug. I'll give him like a, a, a good handshake, a good face bump. Well, not in his face, but a, a, a good violent face bump to show him my appreciation. That's why the other the other priest that got caught with two porn star and in, uh, in the altar of the church, I had more respect for that dude because this dude was doing what was need to be done because that's what those guys does. And those people are being taken down left and right, but it you have to search for it. You have to search for it, man. Okay. The Gentiles are losing their mind. They, they Look, Texas teacher goes above and beyond by conducting lessons from hospital bed. It's just like how silly how those people yearn things to come back to normal. They are yearning it like, yet I want this to go back. I, I miss, I feel, I miss the feeling of being in, in those school that is built on ley line and feed those demons. What would you think about that? Okay. 
Stephanie Hume has been teaching for nearly 20 years. Kids are really looking for some reassurance. Um, these yes. are unsettling times for grown-ups and kids alike. Stability is key. So when she found herself in the emergency room having difficulty breathing and swallowing, her students were on her mind. They were like, we're going to have to do some surgery and you have to stay. Well, the first thought that popped into my mind was, oh my gosh, I'm supposed to finish this book within the next couple of days. We were on like chapter eight of a 10 chapter book. And that's exactly what she did. I didn't want y'all to miss the last part of your book. Because that's how demons feed. They feed on feeding your children garbage and fear and, and um, programming. They are getting silly. They're like, yo, we want these things to come back to normal. We're going to do everything. You know what? It is back to normal. But it's not. It's never going to be. Okay? They are doing like silly things. Look at this dude of... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Look at this dude of... A Christmas Grinch is caught on camera stealing holiday decorations from a family in Queens. CBS 2's Ali Bauman has more now from Little Neck on the appeal to get them back. From the reindeer to Snoopy to Santa's elves, it is clear the Coppola family loves Christmas. We love celebrating everything about it, the decorations, the tree. This year they had even more decorations than ever, a little gesture to lift up healthcare workers like Vincent Coppola. You know, with the way things are this year, we just thought we'll go a little bigger and brighter. But as they slept early Tuesday morning, just after midnight, surveillance video shows a man drive up to their house on 247th Street, walk across their lawn, and take a Santa from out front. He leaves and comes back 10 minutes later to steal a snowman. Then he comes back again an hour later, cuts the nutcracker from their front porch, and carries that away too. I just couldn't believe it three times. Look. Again, if you've been watching my video, you see you see this happening more often. A couple of years ago, you never seen this. You never seen this. You never seen people stealing Christmas. <laughs> it's just it's, this is this is amazing. This is amazing. Like yeah, this dude. Well, first of all, we had a dude keep stealing Christmas tree. He, he stole like thousands worth of Christmas tree. Another dude was stealing our uh, toys. Now this dude go right to your um. Uh, loan and steal everything that you have there he said those people are losing their mind they don't know what to do they don't know how to uh, um <clears throat> uh, deal with this thing they don't know how to to cope with it the country giving millions of healthcare workers and the elderly a chance to be vaccinated before the end of the year it will be months before vaccines become available to the rest of us don't let scammers try to convince you otherwise. The vaccine is just coming out today. It's not going to be available to the general public for, for several months. Uh, don't think you can get to the head of line. That's not going to happen. Okay, so now they already have problem with this vaccine. Well, they've been having problem with it. Now they even got more problem. They got scammers out there. You know those scumbag, they, they will not lose that opportunity to... Uh, I'm sorry, man. It's just like... It's, it's like the Gentiles, they, they can't sit down there and say, what the hell is happening? Why everything is going south for us? Why? Now you got reports like people are being scammed, and then they go to uh, other people that say, oh, yeah, we got the vaccine here, 200 bucks, a t 200 bucks, $1,000, or $100. And they will just inject them with water. Or salt water. They just inject them with salt water. I, I was reading a story that uh, that say that your body can absorb uh, uh, salt in water, so they just inject you with salt water, and they say everything's good, it's good, like you know you're good, and things. And that guy told you straight up, look, listen, you're not gonna get this vaccine in a couple of more months. What what we have here, it's sort of front line, baby. For those of you that, oh, the vaccine's the mark of the beast, is going to be forced on everybody and all that. The moment this thing hit here and then the Antichrist and then none of this garbage. Those people are trying to save themselves. They didn't say, oh, we're going to go in the hood and get the minorities and then and, and stuff like that. Oh, nope. Mm -mm. We're going to get our people first. You know, if you start killing us, then we move to the hood. All right. So they already got scammers selling fake vaccine out there. Okay. So... This is over there in uh, Saudi Arabia, as we already know, um, the, it's keep getting flooded. Okay, that's the desert, okay? The desert is just flooding. They got rivers come out of the desert, and we know for a fact this place is going to go underwater, okay? 
Again, brothers and sisters, if you're shooting something with your phone, hold your phone horizontally. When you hold your phone vertically, your phone's going to record like there will be two big bars this bar on the left that one on the right so you have to hold your phone horizontally because your eyes is made to see on the horizon not vertically so that's why you can't see what's on the big part over here you can't see it that big part over there you cannot see it so you're missing most of the video okay if you put this and that it's like 75% of the video you're missing it you only get 25% please do that all right this is just a tip okay uh <clears throat> that's what happened man okay in the desert you know and then people are gonna sit there and telling you oh, 2020 that's like any normal years man you know all right and again look this it's just happening often and more now, often. like it's just happening non-stop now now to this terrible headline a devastating scene in northwest suburban <laughs> ingleside where two young girls were killed in a house fire. And WGN's Dana Revick is live with more on this tragic story today. Dana. Just devastating. This is the family's home uh, behind me. It is now boarded up and has extensive fire damage. Uh, living inside this house was an older couple, their daughter, her partner, and their three children. Okay, that's the Angel de Barrio right there. I heard them coming. I heard the fire trucks coming but the whole house was inflamed and I heard my neighbor screaming and and saying that the kids were still in the house. A chaotic scene around 1045 last night on North Hunt Avenue in Ingleside, a two-story home engulfed with six people inside. I saw Corey sitting in the street. He had jumped from one of the second floor windows. 17-year-old Corey Evans made it out, but his two little sisters, eight-year-old Lizzie and five-year-old Autumn were still inside. This is a horrible thing, okay? You got two sweet little girls. They, they didn't make it. They didn't, they didn't make it, man. So, that's like um, fiery conflagration of the city, okay? Um, uh, the, the number two of the plagues of apocalypse are Abraham. We know this is happening. Oh, um, <laughs> I want you to eat to, to read the entire uh, Psalm eighty-five a chapter because it's the according to uh, our research we find out michael the archangel the archangel michael is the one that would this that would the uh, um the entire uh psalm 85 mercy and truth are met together righteousness and peace have kissed each other so this is what's happening right now in our community okay i have a lesson for it <clears throat> like i said I have a lesson called um, Psalm 85, uh, the number 10th breakdown, okay, all right? He sent his words and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. That's what's happening right now, okay? Psalm 85, 1, okay? Favorable, adventures, encourages, precept. Psalm 77, 7, will the Lord cast off, of, of, cast off forever and will it be favorable no more unto thy land? Until they brought back the captivity of Jacob, Ezra 1 11. I have a whole lesson on this, but this is not the time yet. You know, that once the father, you know, I, I walk upon command, when the, once the father said, hey, it's time, you know, it's time for me to go after that, but right now it's not the time, okay? We will receive the time. County fire was already on the way, but would never have made it in time to save the car or perhaps the child. In this case, this family was driving with a young year and a half year old, I believe, in the back seat, resulting in the car seat being jammed. And, and it's really hectic in that time. So if you didn't have a plan, it's really hard to divert back to how do I get this child out? What I would hope is anybody. So again, you see those things are happening more and more often. Okay, cars are catching on fire. They're just stuck in the highway. Much more accident, brothers and sisters. More accident. It's just like every single. It's all over, like violent accident, because the those car those highways are built on a ley line. Okay, all right. Then again, more and more of this happening. We see every videos. And now to break news something out of East like Hollywood, that. where a driver slammed into a store and other cars. Yeah, there it is. KKL 9's Desmond Shaw is live overhead. Des. 
Juana, Susie, it looks like this is the vehicle in question here at the corner of Maplewood and Harvard into the small meat market. And you can see the busted up front door. Looks like the car went right through the front door and actually hit someone in the store. We watched, we just watched the uh, ambulance drive away. There are actually three people that had to be transported to the uh, hospital. And uh, we did hear some other cars that were hit, but just based on the damage to this uh, BMW, it looks like the other vehicles may have just been clipped. No word if those people were injured, but three people sent to the hospital after this car went into the front of a meat market. Live at Sky Night overhead. I'm Desmond Shaw, Juan and Susie. Back to you. All right, Desmond, thank you. Yeah, so um, this thing is, uh, um, <clears throat> this thing, it, it just happened more, more and more often. Corner People of are just running their car into supermarkets. I don't know why, but it keeps running cars into supermarkets. The people are losing their freaking mind. Okay, and this came in, uh, uh, this came into me. I didn't want to do this, but for some odd reason, this story keep popping up onto me. So I, I don't know what's going on, but I'm gonna point this out there. In other news, police in South Haven are searching for two people after a two-year-old little boy is abandoned at a Goodwill store. Police say a man was seen walking the child to the store this morning before taking off in a red SUV. The two-year-old was left with a change of clothes. So. Yeah, this is another characteristic of the two third. Okay, uh, they left this child in a goodwill with a note on him, and then some. They they say they could not. It's, their parents could not care for it. Okay, and then they're driving in the night. And a beautiful and a note. Investigators say he's so small he doesn't even know his own name or the names of his parents. Surveillance video captured the man and a woman connected to the case, according to WREG. A suspect was taken into custody in Memphis. The child is now in the custody of Mississippi Child Protective Services. See, that's what happened, okay? So, you know, this poor child, they just abandoned him somewhere, you know? As you, as you know, as you see now, the Gentiles and the two-thirds, they are losing their mind, okay? They are losing their mind. They don't know what's going on, man. So, yeah, this is happening because of the 400 years is up pay up this happened because of uh genesis uh, uh 15 verse 13 act 7 verse 6 as a precept okay and god spake on this wise that his seed should sojourn in a strange land and they should bring them into bondage and entreat them evil for 400 years 400 years is up pay up next verse and the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge, saith the horrible one. So Father is judging this nation with the templates of the apocalypse of Abraham. Okay, you witness uh, fiery conflagration, sorrow, okay, and pestilences and things like that. All right, so all praises to the Most High, Yahweh, the Heavenly Father, in the name of the Holy Spirit, the Earthly Mother, sanctifying Yahweh Shai, the Holy Son, Shalom.